So as I said, so I will give uh, uh, eight lectures, so every day two lectures uh, per day. And uh, first, I would like to present my university, uh, where I come from. So I belong to this Institute of Chemistry, what we call IC2MP, uh, from Poitiers uh, University, and uh, CNRS. So CNRS is the National Center of uh, Research in France. And uh, Poitiers, so where is it? Uh, here is France. So Poitiers is a small town, uh, only uh, 90,000 people, so very small, between Paris, here, and Bordeaux. Maybe you know Bordeaux for the wines. So here is the wines uh, area. And uh, so y as you can see, uh, Poitiers is a very old, very old uh, city, and with uh, the third university in France, actually, founded in uh, so 1432. Uh, so a very old uh, university with uh, 23,000 students in different uh, areas, from law to humanities, uh, social, and uh, of course sciences, chemistry, physics, and mathematics, and so on, and biology. And uh, we have uh, around 1,000 uh, PhD uh, students, what we call doctorants uh, in French. So with uh, 3,000 uh, staff and uh, personnel, and uh, a mixing of what we call universitaire, so it's uh, people from the university and from CNRS. So it belongs to two institutions, and we have actually now uh, 48 uh, laboratories, uh, as this one. Actually, we did uh, uh, the first uh, USPEC meeting, workshop, in this uh, building, uh, five uh, four, four years ago, four years ago. And we will do another one uh, next uh, June, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of next June, uh, in Poitiers too. So you are welcome uh, to come, of course. So here <coughs> is uh, my institute with uh, the, the people here with several uh, teams. So working in water chemistry, so you see here in hydrogeology, in synthesis and reactivity, and in catalysis. Here it was my uh, previous lab. Uh, we are working in catalysis, in organic uh, chemistry. So I am, I am a chemist. I am not a uh, physicist. I am a chemist. I, I, am on, I am doing applied quantum chemistry. I am not doing quantum chemistry, theoretical chemistry. I apply. I am a poor chemist. Uh -huh. So here is, oh, sorry. Here is my team uh, this year. So we, are, we have uh, three uh, Chinese students coming from uh, NPU, this uh, Tso Tong and uh, Li Ping, and uh, one, Bo Wang, is coming from Beijing, uh, which is, who is in PhD. And uh, I have a colleague, to, uh, Dr. Christian Bagman. Uh, and our main goal is to, as, as I wrote here, so we are interested in not in calculating electronic structures, so, uh, okay, we cannot, it's, it doesn't fit. Maybe you can fix, it doesn't fit here. But in uh, understanding the calculations. Huh? We had this problem before. Ah, okay, so we cannot fix it. Okay, so anyway. So, in this group, we are doing modeling chemical reactions on energetic profiles. Uh, so, looking at, uh, so molecules uh, on energetics uh, structures. Uh, as a water uh, acting as a catalyst in organic synthesis in green chemistry. And uh, recently uh, I just uh, submitted a paper on uh, H2 activation and storage by metals on graphitic surfaces on graphene and uh, carbon uh, nan nanotubes. As you can see here, we just got an answer two weeks ago. Uh, so uh, we will publish this paper in a GFI scheme, uh, so it's going soon. So as you can see, you have uh, organometallic fragments with H2, and here is uh, iron, here nickel, and we look at the bonding coordination of H2 on these sites, on uh, graphitic uh, surfaces, both planar and curved, uh, as in nanotube. And the second uh, topic, let's say, is coming from a collaboration with uh, Artem. So it's the discovery of novel materials from DFT calculations and USPEX evolutionary algorithm. So you know better than me this, uh, 
this theory and uh, the code uh, beyond. So looking at binary phases, and uh, so I just start a new uh, topic on CO2 polymerization under high pressure using S block uh, as an element to activate CO2 uh, polymerization. So as I said, uh, so uh, collaborators and collaboration, so we have a strong collaboration with uh, Artem. So I put the three, uh, uh <laughs> your three address. So who was an uh, invited professor, so uh, four years ago, uh, so in January. So as you know, as you know him, uh, so he, he is the creator of this uh, very nice uh, code and, and uh, theory, working with uh, Kyung Soo and uh, Andrei uh, Lyakov, who actually was the first uh, to come in my lab a uh, few weeks before Artem uh, to learn me, to teach me how to use uh, Uspex. So, so we published recently, enfin two years ago, enfin one year ago, a paper on a boron hydrogen, it's boron, sorry, it's in French, boron hydrogen binary phase under high pressure, as you can see here. So here's a gas phase, B2H6, and when you increase pressure, you have this stoichiometry 1,1, one, one, BH, with planar boron uh, layers in uh, green here, with hydrogen in blue between two layers, enfin, between the layers. So we published this paper in a PRL one year ago. And the uh, second team is coming from Artem too, because he has another group in uh, at NPU in Xi'an. So we work with Professor uh, Zeng, uh, a very smart fellow, and uh, in Xi'an. So you, maybe you know Xi'an, I'm sure for some of you, where you have this uh, wonderful site, uh, Terracotta. Have you seen that? The army. And here, so we were, so you, you see it's a long time ago because I have few heirs here. You, huh? uh, <laughs> 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 it was four years ago, but uh, since uh, the wind comes, uh, uh, no more air. And uh, we set up an uh, exchange uh, student program uh, starting so, uh, one year and a half ago. Uh, so up to now we have five, uh, six uh, students who came during uh, their master degree to spend six months in our lab in France. Or maybe, who knows, we can set up a program with uh, uh, MIPT, uh, MI, yeah, MIPT in Moscow. So you are welcome to come uh, to my group or another group of our, our lab uh, in chemistry, of course, uh, working in chemistry. Uh, I want to talk about these guys uh, showing you, because you know uh, in sciences, I think that the main work is done, are done by students, by postdoc or uh, PhD students. So and, he, and he's working hard on the different systems, as you can see here, BH, titanium, nitrogen, uh, hydrogen chloride, and so on. And uh, we just uh, pu published a paper on this system here, beryllium hydrogen. So still under pressure using uh, Uspex. And uh, we submit a paper in PCCP uh, on the titanium nitrides phases under different pressure and here you can see a phase so with titanium atoms in blue and you see here you have a dimers dimers of nitrogens linked to the titanium atoms as you can see here so with a stoichiometry 1 2 at uh, 60 uh, gpa and the last one, uh, so we are writing the paper right now uh, with Atom. Uh, so concerns uh, the chemistry or physics of hydrogen uh, chlorine under high pressure, where you can see this type of phase. You can see here in green a cacome structure of chlorine atoms uh, with uh, these rings, three member rings and six membered rings here, as we can find in these nice uh, uh, pictures that I 
took uh, in Shan actually. In, in, uh, in you have insect, gri gri gri. Uh, I don't know how to call that in Chinese, but uh, uh, yeah, it's very funny. So here is uh, my uh, team. So I belong to this uh, team. So catalysis on unconventional <coughs> media. So you see, we are here. Only two permanents on these uh, three nice uh, Chinese students uh, this year. So here is just a presentation, a brief presentation. So I want to switch. Uh, we can start the lectures uh, now. So I will talk on the rationalization and the prediction of molecular and extended structures uh, using orbital interactions. So I mean uh, a molecular orbital theory and crystal orbital uh, theory. Uh, so uh, I will use uh, chemist tools and concepts. So the basic ones, I will talk again about Lewis uh, theory and the electron counting rules, the VACPR theory that you should learn during the first year of at the university. Enfin, in France, we do that. And then I will switch to molecular orbital theory and I will finished my uh, lectures by the bond structures uh, theory. So I hope that I will uh, teach you a few keys to explain the electronic properties. Sometimes, of course, uh, we are not going to explain everything, but uh, almost everything in covalent uh, systems, molecular and uh, extended uh, systems. And uh, I want to recall this uh, sentence. Uh, so we are interested not in calculating electronic structures, but in understanding the calculations. So uh, it's coming from Rod Hoffman, who is the father of, uh, for, uh, for me, of uh, bonds uh, and uh, the way of looking bonds in, uh, in chemistry and uh, maybe in physics too. So he's professor at Cornell University, and as maybe you know, he's a, a Nobel Prize. I think it was in 82. I'm not really sure. 81. Oh, 81, yeah. Actually, now he's a professor of literature. Yeah, he's professor of literature. It's what I say, he's professor, but at Cornell, but I don't, I don't say in what, uh, but he's in, in literature. He's doing, doing poetry, you said? Mm -hmm. huh? Poetry, yeah. Mm, yeah. But he's still, uh, he's still doing sciences. <coughs> So, uh, the outline. So, uh, so I will uh, record the basic uh, bonding concepts. It just uh, so you have to look at your uh, at the papers here. So you have to read from the top left to right, and after you turn on the left to right, and you have to go back because there is a, a mess in the printer. But uh, I am sure that you will uh, find the way to to read to follow. Then uh, I will switch uh, in the second part to molecular orbital theory uh, uh, with a few applications, uh, basic uh, illustrations of uh, molecular orbital theory. But if you, can, uh, uh, if you understand this, you may understand everything, uh, I am sure. Uh, of course, I will recall the octet rule. And then I will switch to the 18 electron rule for transition metal complexes. Uh, two type of rule. And, uh, and uh, I will focus on uh, the isolable analogy uh, coming from uh, Road of Man uh, rocks. Uh, we will uh, see a few things on electron deficient and electron rich systems. And I will finish. Uh, this molecular uh, part and the electron counting in clusters. So I mean clusters, so in uh, big molecules, uh, uh, looking at the Wade and Mingo's electron counting rules. Uh, so a brief introduction of electron counting in, in clusters. And I will finish, uh, I'm sure, enfin, I am sure, I'm not sure, but we will see. Uh, if I will have time uh, to introduce uh, the crystal orbital theory, but from a chemist point of view. So, okay. With few applications on uh, classical uh, systems. So, uh, for the literature, so I, I will send you a few references of books 
And the first one is uh, a book of uh, Ronald Gillespie, who is one of the authors of the VSCPR uh, theory. Uh, it's a very nice, uh, very nice book. So you can have a so look at the chemical bonding on molecular geometry. So from Lewis to electronic to electron densities. One of the Gillespie's books uh, has been translated into Russian. Oh, great. No, no, this one. Oh, yeah, not this one. Ah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, here's the last one. Uh, we'll say in English, but in Russian it will be better. Yeah, yeah of course. For the Russian speakers. Uh, so, uh, so Lewis. So, so here's just to recall. So we, we tried to reach the octet rule. Huh? Uh, on the, so he's a drawing that he used to teach uh, to uh, his uh, students uh, why you have such stoichiometry CH4, for example, uh, or NH3, and so on. So here I will give you my, what we call my recette. So my recette is my recipe <laughs> to draw uh, um, a Lewis uh, structure. It's what I did with my students uh, at the first year, but even at the third year, on the fourth year, because uh, still in the fourth year, they do not know how to draw a Lewis uh, structure sometimes. So, f oh, sorry. So, first, you have to count the valence electron, so what I call VIC, valence electron count uh, for a given structures. And you determine the pairs of electrons, so it's very, uh, very easy. You should consider so the valence electron for each block. So the S block on the left of your, the periodic table, Mendeleev table, uh, the P block and the D block. So with uh, so the the occupation of uh, the S orbitals for the S block, the S and P valence orbitals, and for the D block, uh, you have nine valence orbitals, but only the D and the S orbitals are occupied. Uh, so you just have to, to deal with that. And after second step, you have to link the atom with one pair. So you consider a two-center, two-electron bond in order to start. Uh, so you, here you build the skeleton. So it depends on your chemical culture. Actually, it's not so easy to do that. Uh, for example, if I say C6H6, you think at Benzene, yeah, but you have more than 80 isomers only with C6H6. So, so the culture told us that it's benzene. It's a six-member ring, it's a cycle, but you may have other isomers uh, within um, a stoichiometry. Then, uh, for the terminal halogen atoms, you put three lone pairs. For oxygen, at least two. You start to draw. And after, if you can, you follow the octet rule, so eight, four pairs around each atom for the main group, only one for hydrogen. And you choose a Lewis structure with a maximum of bonding pairs. Always you have to choose a Lewis structure with a maximum of bonding pairs. And then try to avoid formal charges. They should be far away from each other. And you may have, of course, several Lewis structures uh, uh, in resonance. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, here, I may introduce uh, a, a another tool that we use in chemistry, what we call the formal charge. So here you have NH3, so easy, uh, nitrogen, five valence electrons. Hydrogen, one, you have three, so eight electrons, so four pairs. Four pairs, three to describe the three uh, single bonds, nitrogen, hydrogen, and one lone pair on nitrogen. And you can uh, determine the formal charge starting from the number of electrons of the atom, I mean the isolated atom, so it's five here, and the number of electrons around each atom. So here, one, two, three, four, five. So the formal charge of nitrogen in NH3 is zero in this case. Okay? You have a, a formal charge of zero. 
So let's go to the ammonium uh, cation N H4 plus. So in this case, you have still have five electrons for five electrons for nitrogen. So four electrons coming from the four hydrogen atoms. So you go to up to nine, and as you have a plus charge, you will have eight electrons. So four pairs: one, two, three, four. And the formal charge of nitrogen in this case is five for nitrogen atom isolated minus one, two, three, four. So plus one. So the formal charge here is plus one for nitrogen. So if you can do that, of course, you can write uh, different type of um, Lewis structures. We will practice uh, after. So here is the basic. Uh, you can sleep if you want. <laughs> but uh, I think that you can say a lot when you look at uh, structures uh, only using uh, Lewis uh, structures. So examples, we will use, we will, I will do that later. I'll look at the blackboard, but uh, I will do that. But so now, when you use the Lewis concept, you have no information on the local geometry. You have only information how to locate pairs of electrons. But you have no information on the local geometry. You have to use another theory. So one of the well-known theories that we use is the VSEPR theory. Uh, for uh, chemical systems. So it's a valence shell electron pair repulsion. So several uh, scientists work on this uh, during the uh, years uh, 40s, during the 40s. And here is so the GSP, it's a Canadian uh, fellow working at McMaster Mag Hamilton. He's still alive, huh? of course. So the one who uh, write uh, the book that I show you uh, before. So uh, VSEPR so is an uh, approach to the local structures of a molecule. I'm talking about local structures. So the structural environment around each atom of a given molecule. So the basic ideas uh, are the following. So as you can see here, you can read it you have to calculate the number of bonding pairs and the lone pairs around each uh, atom. And you consider that the nuclei will minimize their position depending on the number of pairs around each atom. So, for example, if you have this uh, formula, so A is a central atom, X, the number of ligands, what we call ligands, is a substituent around each atom. So NH3 is H, of course. And M here is the number of lone pairs on the central atoms. So if you add N plus M, you have what we call the steric number. The steric number, N plus M. For, for two, the basic geometry is linear, obvious. La, as in beryllium H2, BeH2. Another case for three, you, have, you may have the trigonal planar when you have three ligands, as in boron hydrogen 3. And uh, if you see you have only two atoms around the central atoms, you will have a bent molecules a bent molecule here, yeah. and so on. So what do you have to learn is the basic geometries depending of the steric number and then the usual geometries around each atom. Uh, so we are going to practice now. So for example, CO2. So is CO2, so you start with your uh, formula, CO2. So I calculate the uh, valence electron count. So four times one plus six for oxygen times two. So we will have 16 electrons. So eight pairs. So it's very easy. It's just to, to give you a, a method, 
is, I know that you know how to do that. But uh, so I start to do the link, the links between atoms. So two pairs. So here you have eight minus two, six pairs remains. So as I told you, I put at least two on terminal oxygen atoms. So it will be six minus four. So you see, it remains two pairs. And you try to follow the octet rule for carbon. And so you put a multiple bonds between C uh, and O. So you will have two minus two, zero. So it's done. It's OK here. So I look at the at this atom. So it will be A, X. So you have two oxygen atoms around each, uh, enfin around the carbon. And you have zero lone pairs. So in the official writing, you don't have to write this. But I do it just to remind that you have to count the lone pairs around uh, the central atoms. So 2 plus 0 equal 2, even in France, <laughs> even in chemistry. <laughs> so you, you will get a linear uh, molecule uh, in this case. So you, you may switch now uh, SO2, for example. SO2, so it's a nice case. So SO2, so let's continue. So it's 6 times 1 for sulfur. So sulfur is the same colon of uh, oxygen. Oxygen, so it's 6 times 2. So you will have 18 uh, electrons. So you see, you have a triatomic uh, unit. And you have 18 electrons. Here is a triatomic unit, and you have 6 in those. So you are sure that you will not find the same local uh, structures. So how to draw the Lewis? So I start by putting two pairs for the links between sulfur and oxygen, OK? Then I put two on each <coughs> oxygen atoms. So here I, will, I draw six pairs. So it remains three pairs, OK? Three pairs. So here you have several ways. So let's take this one. You, t you can write like this. Why not? Uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pairs. So it's, uh, it's OK. But as you can see, around the sulfur, you have five pairs. So the, the octet rule is not OK here, normally. So you may write another Lewis structures. So I draw again. So two pairs, four, six. And now look carefully up like this and here. So in this case, you have four pairs around sulfur, uh, as you can see. But the formal charge of oxygen here is, so I am writing the formal charge. So oxygen, you have six electrons minus how many electrons around oxygen? Seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just in the vicinity of oxygen, seven. So you will have here formally a minus charge on oxygen. So you should find some, somewhere a uh, plus charge because you have a neutral uh, molecule. So sulfur, formal, uh, formal charge. Uh, formal charge. I was charge formel in French. So my FC, formal charge. So it's six for sulfur, isolated sulfur. And now in the molecule, one, two, three, four, five. OK, so plus one. So plus. And here, if you look carefully, zero. You have six for oxygen, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six around oxygen atom. So it's zero. And the, the sum of the formal charge 
over the atoms should be equal to the charge of the molecule, of course. So you have to check uh, at the end. So here is perfect. And if you follow me carefully, so now I can draw another Lewis structure like this, doing what we call a de delocalization of the electron pairs. So starting from the lone, p lone pair, like this, up, and the pi here is coming on, on the atom. So you will get this Lewis structure, another Lewis structure, like this, uh, and with the lone pair on the sulfur. So actually here you have three Lewis structures. So where is the through? It's a mixing. Uh, you have a, a width for each of the structures that you can determine using, uh, for example, um, uh, ebb initial calculations. Uh, uh. So the bonding should be between a single and a double bond. And actually is what we see uh, for SO2. So coming back to the, the local structure now. So the sulfur atom is A X two E one. So N plus M, the steric number is three. So the, the figure of repulsion, what we call the figure of repulsion, is a triangle, but only with two atoms around the central atoms. So you can, uh, the conclusion is you have a bent molecule here uh, for this case. I don't know what's happened here. Okay, uh, you have a bent uh, molecule. So it's well known, you know that already, but uh, I want to go slowly at the beginning and uh, to be sure that we are in the same uh, file. Yes, to, we are together, let's say. So for four, for the steric number four, you, you have the case of H2O, so you can do only uh, by thinking by yourself. So a six for oxygen, two for the two hydrogen atoms, so it will be eight, so four pairs. You have two pairs for the bonding between uh, oxygen and hydrogen, so it remains two pairs on uh, oxygen. So you will have uh, this uh, Lewis formula, of course. So oxygen will be AX2 E2. So 2 plus 2 equals 4. So the main figure is a tetrahedral, but without two atoms. So you have two lone pairs here. So you will get a bent molecule. A bent molecule for H2, as you know. Uh, the angle will be lower than 110 because you have a steric repulsion between the lone pairs and the bonding pairs too. And you, you may have information using VSCPR2 and the valence angles uh, within the molecule. And so on. So here, for example, a, a well-known one. So, uh, our term works on xenon and fluorine uh, binary systems uh, under high pressure. So we, we can look at this one. So xenon fluorine 2. So xenon fluorine 2. So we start with the valence electron count. So for xenon is the whole. You are following me? <coughs> yes, eight. So fluorine, seven, time two. So you will have, so 22, right? 22 electrons. So you have to draw 11 pairs. You have to draw 11 pairs for this uh, molecule. So you start to draw what I call the skeleton. So here is obvious. Uh, it's like this, so it will be 11 minus 2, it will be 9. And after, when you have uh, halogen atoms uh, at the end, terminal halogen atoms, you put three lone pairs. 
like this. So we run three, uh, three pairs. Where are you going to put the pairs? So here the octet rules are okay for both uh, fluorine atoms. So you would put one, two, and three on xenon. So you can use VACPR to determine the geometry of the molecule or the local geometry around xenon. So you will have AX2, AX2, E3. 2 plus 3 equals 5. So the, this is the steric number. You should get a trigonal B pyramid structures, but without atoms in the equatorial plane. So the structure should be linear. So only using VCPR, you may uh, explain the local geometry of this, uh, what we call hypervalent uh, molecule. Why hypervalent? Because if you look carefully, you have five pairs of electrons around an atom. Only we say, more than one century ago, that you should have only four pairs. But uh, he was an organic chemist. <laughs> uh, so it is uh, quite unusual. But we can explain easily why this is stable using molecular orbital theory. We will see that after. And we can continue, but I will not do it. So here, for example, with the non formula, uh, you can practice by yourself to understand why a xenon fluorine 4 has a square planar uh, geometry. And the last one, which is very rare in chemistry, is, uh, for example, uh, iodine fluorine 7. Uh, and you will find a bipyramidal uh, pentagonal. But you should have a big, very big central uh, atom in order to avoid the steric repulsion between the lone pairs and your uh, nuclei here in yellow. So, uh, now, uh, so I give uh, the, uh, the, the uh, case, let's say, to uh, understand the local geometries of molecular systems, but we need uh, a link between solid state chemistry and molecular organic or inorganic chemistry in order to rationalize a localized two center, two electron, or delocalized covalent networks. Here, in, during my lectures, I will, t I will talk only on covalent uh, networks, localized or delocalized, it doesn't matter, uh, using so orbital interactions. So to, to, to get uh, so this link, uh, we can uh, use uh, the zintol claim concepts. Uh, so there are Zintol and Clem were uh, two uh, German uh, scientists. And one of these uh, concepts uh, says that in three state, here I write A and Z compounds. So the groups one and two, so is a block S atoms, give their valence electrons to the block P Z sublattice. So it's a rule. So it's very un you can understand easily. Uh, you have uh, electropositive atoms. You have electropositive atoms. Will give uh, their electrons, valence electrons, to the sublattice. So the uh, well-known case is uh, sodium uh, TL. So you will have formally. It's not a chemical reaction here. Equal. Eh? It's uh, the concept. So a cation Na plus plus TL minus. TL minus has a number of electrons of carbon. And when you look at the covalent stability structures of uh, these uh, atoms, you will see a diamond-like uh, structure. So you can understand why TL has, is four coordinated and in a tetrahedral uh, structure. In a tetrahedral structure. So now applications in solid state <coughs> chemistry. So I focus on solid state chemistry because we, we, we mostly work uh, using U specs and uh, other uh, approaches uh, in solid state. So for example, here, 
So CAGA2. So we start to use the Zinto claim concept. So formally you have calcium 2 plus and 2 GA minus. So gallium has three valence electrons. You have a charge of uh, one. So you add one electrons. And around each gallium, you have, if you look carefully, you have four gallium. And each of them gives, give, gives yeah, one electron. So you will have eight electrons around each center. So the octet rule is, uh, it's okay. And if you draw uh, now uh, uh, Lewis uh, formula, like this. So eight electrons, so lead, leads to four pairs. So four link, here's the pairs, pairs of electrons. And you can see that gallium has a formal charge of, as I saw, so say three for isolated gallium minus, so one, two, three, and four, so minus one. So the formal charge is minus here. And so you can un understand why you have uh, this charge, and, uh, enfin, this stoichiometry in this uh, solid state compound. Uh, easily. So using VCPR, you will have a AX4 E0. Uh, so you will have a tetrahedral environment around each uh, gallium atoms. So you may understand why you have such networks, covalent networks made of gallium atoms in red here. Uh, very easily. And in the voids, you have uh, so the calcium cations uh, in green. So so here, <laughs> so another case, uh, we increase the number of electrons actually per formula. If you look carefully here, you have uh, two dimensional layers of silicon, of silicon atoms in red. So calcium will give two electrons to the silicon uh, network. So silicon has four valence electrons. You have three silicon atoms around each silicon, so three times one. Uh, you consider only um, a link uh, of a two center, two electron uh, link, uh, bonding, bond. The charge is minus, so you will have eight electrons around each silicon here. So how to understand now the local uh, geometry, so you have to write your Lewis formula. You have three. So here are three pairs, three bonding pairs. So it remains one to get eight electrons. So you put here. Okay? And if you look, to, to be sure that you do not uh, forget one electron, you have to calculate the formal charge. Uh, so here is four for silicon. And you have one, two, three, four, five around each silicon. So you have a, a silicon minus. Formally, formally, I mean. I don't say the form is a charge. Uh, it's for, uh, the formal charge. So uh, using VCPR theory, you will have uh, AX3E1 formula. So n plus m, the steric number is equal to 4. So you should get a tetrahedra around silicon, but only with three atoms. So your atom is trigonal pyramidal. So you can understand these layers. The local geometry around the silicon, why is bent, and uh, is in pyramidal as in NH3. Actually for us it's NH3, the local coordination. Uh, it's like in ammonia, NH3. So you have these corrugated uh, layers in these uh, systems, uh, two-dimensional uh, layers. When you increase the number of electrons per formula, so you see we start from a three-dimensional layer to a two-dimensional layers to two-dimensional layers, and now you have a, a kind of inorganic polymers, of inorganic polymers in these solid-state compounds, at, with this uh, formula. 
calcium silicon. So here you have two uh, electrons per silicon with the eight uh, electrons around each one. So if you draw your Lewis formula, so you have two silicon like this, so two pairs. So if you put two pairs, uh, you start with four, so it remains two. Two bond non-bonding pairs, two lone pairs on silicon. So here is like H2O, it's like water. Uh, you can see. So you will have uh, AX2E2 type of silicon. Uh, so you will have a bent silicon. So you can understand why you have such zigzag chains in these solid state compounds. Uh, you don't need to do more. Of, uh, of course, you need to do more if you want to calculate the bond gap, for example, between uh, the valence bond and the conduction bonds and so on. But for the local geometries, you can understand using only VCPR and Lewis concepts uh, why you get such uh, uh, geometries. So our, uh, here is a, a more complicated, of a more complicated because you have two types of silicon in these silicon four clusters. You see, you have one silicon with three neighborhood, yeah, three neighbors. Sorry, three uh, silicons, and this one has only two. So the compound is uh, barium three silicon four. So for one, we, which is three coordinated, you will have so four valence electrons, a charge of one here. I choose a charge of one. Why not? And you have three uh, silicon around one, so you will get eight two. For the second silicon site, so we have four for silicon, a charge of two this time and two silicon, so you will have an uh, electron precise count. Uh, in, in the two, in the two, uh, for the two silicon sites. So if you draw now your uh, Lewis uh, structure, like this, you should get something like this. Uh, you should get something like this. Uh, with uh, four, five uh, bonding pairs and with four, five, six lone pairs uh, in this type. So you may understand why you have here a trigonal pyramidal for these silicon atoms here is AX3E1 and this one is AX2E2 as in H2O. So you should have, you should get, you should have a bent configuration, conformation around uh, this uh, silicon uh, atom here. Uh, so I switch this one. Ah, this one is nice. So I come back uh, to a two-dimensional uh, covalent network made of tellurium atoms in uh, CS2TE5. So using the zintel claim concept, you will get two CS plus and T5, two minus. If you look carefully, so you will have five, uh, no, sorry, look at the unit cell, not the unit cell, let's say the building block. The building block in this, in this uh, layer. So the building block will be this fragment. T E five. So five T will be uh, will give thirty electrons with a charge of two. So you will have thirty two uh, electrons. So thirty two electrons. So you have to one more time to draw the Lewis structure for this. So telegram. So like this. So one, two, three, four, T, 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 T. So here I am talking about the link. Uh, I am drawing the skeleton, but you have, do not forget 
uh, that you have a two-dimensional compound, so you have to put also these electrons uh, here. So we have formally one, two, three, four, five, six pairs, six bonding pairs, okay? Six bonding pairs, so it remains ten pairs of electron. Agree? We have 16 pairs. I say uh, six bonding pairs, so still 10. So we can put one, two here, one, two here, because I, I, th I told you that for oxygen, terminal oxygen, we put two lone pairs in. Yeah. Terrarium is like oxygen, so I put two lone pairs. Okay? Two here, one, two, one, two. So it will be eight, right? Eight lone pairs, right? So it remains two. So one ear on one ear. One ear on one ear. So uh, let's use now VCPR. For this terrarium site, we have uh, AX2, one and two. E2 type uh, center, right? So you should get a bent, a bent uh, uh, local uh, geometry is what we, we find, is what we see actually uh, from uh, X ray diffraction. And uh, for this uh, terrarium uh, center, as you can see, we have a AX4, E2. You have two lone pairs. So it's going from an uh, octahedron, but only with four uh, tellurium atoms around. So <coughs> it will be uh, square planar, as in xenon <coughs> chlorine 4. So you can understand why you have a planar uh, tellurium 5 unit, units in these uh, two-dimensional networks. Uh, okay, in this uh, compound, yeah? Does the geometry actually follow that? I mean, you told the X-ray, it means that the angle should be 90 in that square planner yeah. from from set, right? The ideal angle is 90, yes. They, they, they are actually 90? Mm. Or ki kind of 90? Probably kind of 90. A kind of 90, yes. no, I, I, actually I cannot answer, I don't know. But it, it should be around 90. Because you may have distortion coming from the cations, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, but it's around. Yeah, yeah, it's around 90. Yeah, and also from uh, separate, you can deduce the angle um, uh, for the bent linear. Yeah, it should be 109 more or less. 109. No, or less. lower, lower yes, than. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. If you remember, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing about H uh, two O, water. Yeah. Uh, you have lone pairs. Uh, of, uh, you, you know that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. From, uh, this is, there are two bonds uh, uh, connecting uh, each uh, unit. Yes. Why one of these? Uh, two bonds, four yeah. bonds. No, four. One, so two, yeah. three, four. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, couldn't be uh, two of these bonds uh, be connected to the other layer? Yeah, sure, it could. But uh, yeah, you're right. Oh. It will be a polytype. Mm -hmm. Another. How do you say? Another. Enfin, not a trap in this case, but a polymorph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, yeah. As the case I, I told you for a uh, given stoichiometry for C6H6, you may have other isomers. The case, yeah, yeah. And oh, now you have to calculate <laughs> the energy using DFT or another uh, quantum uh, program code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be. Here we are looking at local geometry around each atom, using VCPR, I mean. Mm -hmm. We are not looking at the global, the, uh, yeah, the total geometry uh, uh, structures. Uh, I'll switch this one, i switch also this one, so you, you may have a look uh, and practice uh, by yourself uh, at home or in a cafe or I don't know where. Uh, here is a paper from, you know these guys, uh, Professor Organov, 
So they work on a magnesium oxygen system under so high pressure, and they found these beautiful uh, uh, structures uh, with a stoichiometry one two, which is very unusual actually. Uh, as a first year student, you should, you will answer. So for magnesium oxygen, you will have a stoichiometry one one. Uh, magnesium will give two electrons. Oxygen will take two electrons in order to follow the octet octet uh, rule octet rule but uh, you find this type of uh, units you see uh, a dimers o2 2 minus for many o2 2 minus is isoelectronic to f2 so you can understand why is this is stable it's like uh, f2 huh? and actually you find such structure local structure i mean uh, dimers of oxygen in uh, calcium o2 on uh, in at uh, sodium 2O2 experimentally. Uh, so only by counting the electrons you may understand uh, the local, I'm, I'm talking about the local geometry and the stoichiometries, uh, the stoichiometry of this uh, compound under high pressure. Uh, so limitation, because always when you have uh, uh, rules, uh, you have limitations, uh, you have exceptions. So for VCPR theory, so you rationalize and you may predict local geometry, local geometry around an atom in a molecule or in an extended network. But you have no information on uh, the global geometries. And I will show you a simple case. Um, as you have seen, the pi bonds, the multiple bonds, are not taken, uh, are not taken in account. For example, in C2H4, VACPR will say that you have a trigonal, a planar trigonal environment around each carbon atom. But you may have this form, a planar structure for C2H4, or this one, a rotation of 90 degrees of the CH2, the methylene group, actually. Why not? For VCPR, it's okay. Each carbon follows the AX3 uh, local uh, environment. So we need uh, another uh, theory to explain why C2H4 is planar. Uh, another case, the lone pairs interactions between local groups are not taken in account using VCPR. The steric repulsion uh, is not taken in account using uh, VCPR. For example, here, uh, when known compound, so it's B2Cl4, in solid state is, is planar, D2H, uh, as you can see here, but in gas phase, the two uh, B C L two groups are perpendicular to each other. Uh, uh, so only due to the packing of the molecules in a uh, three state, you can go from uh, this uh, structure to this one to the planar one. In order to get a pi stacking between the molecules in solid state. So you need another theory to, to explain uh, the global uh, geometry. And uh, one more case. So here is uh, oxygen under high pressure. And they found, you see this helical uh, chain of oxygen. Uh, if you look carefully, you may, you may think that it could exist. Huh? It's very easy. Uh, uh, oxygen, so it's like this. So you have some only to duplicate the building block like this. So VACPR will tell you that each oxygen atom will be bent uh, because you have a A, X2, E2, but you don't have, uh, you have any information about uh, the global uh, geometries of this uh, 1D uh, system. Uh, uh, so you cannot say that you have a spiral chain of uh, O4 in dense uh, oxygen. So you need uh, another theory to, or to do calculations. And uh, coming back to Lewis, uh, so I will uh, uh, show you a few limitations of uh, the Lewis theory too. So the octet rules are broken uh, for electron rich or poor systems. For example, how to explain uh, that uh, sulfur uh, hexafluoride fluoride sulfur exists. Uh, here you have six bonding pairs 
around each sulfur atom. So you have 12 electrons around the sulfur. So uh, using only the Lewis uh, theory, uh, you may not understand. Uh, we say you may not because you can, but you may not if you draw your um, so the formula like this, why not, with six. So you have to put three lone pairs on each fluoride. So you would get these Lewis uh, structures. So you can see that you have 12 uh, electrons, enfin six uh, bonding pairs around each uh, sulfur. But we know how to do that, how to deal. You may draw another uh, Lewis formula which respects the octet rule and is very easy. You erase a bonding, another bonding, and you draw like this. Minus, minus, and here you have two plus. Uh, with such a Lewis uh, formula, and, uh, you may delocalize the charge in several uh, Lewis formula, and you may explain actually the unicity of the bond of the bonds, of the sulfur fluorine bonds. But uh, the fir first side uh, is maybe difficult to explain uh, <coughs> using uh, Lewis uh, theory. Uh, another question, why lone pairs in H2O are not equivalent? They are different in energy. If you look at a Lewis uh, formula, you have symmetrical lone pairs. But when, when you use photoelectron spectra, uh, you see two different energies for these uh, lone pairs. So here, Lewis uh, theory uh, does not give you uh, any explanation for this uh, experimental fact. That's because of hydrogen bond, I guess, no? No, 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 we will see, no, no, it's not. No, no, it's, it's due to the fact that one lone pair is sigma pair and the other is a pi pair. We will, we will explain this using uh, molecular orbital theory. You have a pure P orbital to describe a lone pair and a SP type orbital to describe the second lone pair. So they are not at the same energy, but we will see that. So it's a limitation of uh, uh, the Lewis uh, formula. And uh, for CH4 too, uh, when you use a when you look at CH4, so uh, you can show to a baby, enfin not maybe a baby, but you have four uh, uh, identical uh, carbon-hydrogen uh, bonds. Huh, uh, but when you look at the photoelectron spectrum, you may see two bonds, uh, one with an intensity 3 and one with an intensity 1, let's say. You don't see a peak with a, a four intensity. And here, one more time, you, you may explain this using a molecular orbital theory because you have a, a, a bonding level, a single bonding level, and a triply degenerate bonding levels, the T1U uh, levels in a CH4. And finally, is a well-known case. When you draw O2, uh, O2, so oxygen, six electrons, O2, 12, so six pairs, uh, six pairs of electrons. Usually you do like this. Uh, for, uh, 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 no, I say, uh, yes, six pairs, yeah, six. And you see that uh, all electrons are, uh, fine, you have only pairs of electrons, but uh, O2 is paramagnetic. So how do you explain that using Lewis? There is a discrepancy between uh, Lewis and uh, the experimental uh, results uh, looking at the ma magnetism of uh, O2. So we have to use another uh, theory, another approach. And I am coming to <laughs> so the main purpose of these lectures, so the molecular orbital uh, theory. OK, so it's my first uh, <laughs> talk. Uh, we will continue this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>